Today, we're comparing the Apple iPhone 14 Pro Max versus the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. These are arguably the two best phones out right now. And I know that comparing the two uh, is a dangerous thing to do, but today I wanna share with you the similarities as well as the differences between these two great phones to ultimately help you decide which is right for you. As always, I will leave the purchase links down in the description. But first, before we get started, I am doing a giveaway on this brand new iPhone 14 Pro. If you want a chance to win, be sure to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and leave a comment with your Instagram username. And then follow me on Instagram, where I will announce the winner on March the 12th. Okay, so to start, let's compare the prices, as I find that helps put things in perspective. So the 14 uh, Pro Max comes in at $1,099 for 128 gigabytes. Now compared to that, the S23 Ultra uh, comes in at $1,199, but does come with double the storage at 256 gigabytes. In terms of the design, uh, the 14 Pro Max has this really nice matte glass finish on the back uh, here in this space black color, and then on the sides it uses this polished stainless steel frame. Now compared to that, the S23 Ultra also has a matte glass back, great for resisting fingerprints, uh, and here I have it in this green color, which I think looks especially great. Uh, and then in terms of the frame, it also has a shiny frame, uh, but this one is made of aluminum. Now, both phones I think look really good uh, and match their high price tags, but in terms of the comfort, uh, I will say that the S23 Ultra feels just a little bit more comfortable to use in the hand, uh, and this is largely thanks to the fact that the frame on the Ultra is slightly curved, and as a result, feels a little bit less sharp to hold in your hand, uh, though I will say the sharper uh, corners that you get at the tops of the phone uh, can dig a little bit into your palm when compared to the more rounded corners that you get on the 14 Pro Max. Overall, these are both two really good looking phones, uh, but I have to say I slightly prefer the design of the sharper look on the S23 Ultra. And then looking closely uh, at the camera modules, you can see that the 14 Pro Max has a triple lens camera system, which looks very similar to last year's 13 Pro Max, uh, where the 23 Ultra has a four lens camera system and kind of individually uh, houses the lenses in the frame. And overall, I think this looks a little bit cleaner uh, and also better protects the lenses thanks to having a metal ring that goes around each lens. Now, don't worry, I have a very thorough camera comparison uh, of the two coming up, but in terms of the design, I think the camera camera module here too looks better on the Ultra. And then when it comes to the weight, uh, both phones feel dense in the hand. So that is something to bear in mind if you're considering uh, these larger sizes of phones. Now, technically the iPhone 14 Pro Max is a little bit heavier and it does feel a little bit more dense in the hand. And I'm not sure whether it's the sharper design uh, or perhaps that stainless steel frame, but I do prefer the slightly more dense feel of the 14 Pro Max. Both phones are also IP68 certified, uh, meaning you can comfortably use them out in the rain, something that is especially important here in London. Now, let's talk about the displays. So the 14 Pro Max has a 6.7 inch display where the Ultra has a 6.8 inch display. So it is technically uh, a little bit bigger, but it is crucial to note that the display is taller, but not wider. And this means the phone is equally usable uh, in one hand. In fact, the taller display on the 23 Ultra means you can see more lines of text uh, in emails or messages, and is especially great uh, for split screen multitasking, a feature I absolutely love on the S23 Ultra uh, and wish Apple brought to the 14 Pro Max, especially because I do consider this to be a pro feature uh, that is really lacking from the iPhone. Now, both displays are also really crack resistant, uh, and this is great, but as a result, the glass has become softer, uh, and this will mean that scratches will occur more easily uh, on both. In fact, on both displays, even the S23 Ultra, which I've only had for like two weeks, um, I'm already seeing some hairline scratches just from daily use. So I definitely recommend you use a screen protector, uh, and I'll be sure to leave my recommended screen protector down in the description. But this flaw is easy to overlook when you turn on both displays. Now, both these displays are OLED, which means that your whites are gonna be super bright uh, and the blacks are gonna be super dark thanks to being able to turn off individual pixels. Uh, you get really high contrast and colors really pop and this really brings your content to life. Whether you are scrolling through social media, uh, watching videos, typing up emails, or playing games, all look amazing on both of these displays. In fact, I can easily say that these are the two best smartphone displays out right now. 
Now, technically, uh, the pixel per inch count or PPI on the uh, 23 Ultra is a little bit higher than on the 14 Pro Max. And as a result, the screen is a little bit sharper, though I can tell you that from day to day use, uh, both displays are plenty sharp and it is not possible to discern individual pixels uh, when using the phones normally. Now, a bigger difference uh, between the two phones is the color reproduction, where the S23 Ultra has a more vibrant, uh, more saturated color profile compared to the more neutral look of the 14 Pro Max. Both phones also have a super smooth 120 hertz refresh rate and this is something that I would expect at this price point uh, and is really great to see as of course this means that any movement on screen whether you are scrolling through your social media uh, or switching between apps is just going to be buttery smooth and what is also great uh, is that the refresh rate on both phones is also uh, adaptable so it will actually lower the refresh rate when you're on a static image to help save battery but I'll talk more about battery life in a sec. Now, another big difference uh, between these two phones is the approach to the front camera, where the 14 Pro Max introduced the dynamic island. And this effectively merges your hardware uh, and software and creates a new way to quickly see app info at a glance or letting you switch between open apps. Overall, I like the added functionality that the dynamic island brings, uh, but it does of course take up screen space, much more so when compared to Samsung's uh, more minimalistic pinhole camera, which as you can see is very unobtrusive uh, and takes up far less screen space. Now, to be fair, uh, the dynamic island does enable face ID, which is still the best face unlock in any phone. At the same time though, the 23 Ultra has that underscreen ultrasonic fingerprint sensor, which I'd argue is actually faster than Face ID, uh, and because of its minimalistic, un more unobtrusive uh, implementation, I mean I ultimately prefer the biometrics and the uh, front selfie camera implementation on the 23 Ultra. So overall, comparing the two displays side by side, I would say I prefer the display on the S23 Ultra. Another cool feature uh, that you're only gonna find on the 23 Ultra is of course the S Pen. Now, how important this will be to you will vary. Uh, personally, I don't find myself using it too much as my handwriting is pretty atrocious uh, and generally prefer to type, but I must say this is by far the best implementation of a stylus in any phone and does enable some cool features, letting you quickly uh, take some notes on your phone. It also has a hover feature so you can do some really precise input. Uh, I've even used it to edit some thumbnails in Lightroom. I typically don't do this on a phone, but if I were to, the 23 Ultra would be my way to do this. I also like that you can use it as a remote shutter button, letting you place the camera somewhere uh, and then use the side button on the stylus to take a photo. But perhaps most importantly to me, as someone who doesn't use the stylus too often, uh, I really appreciate the super seamless integration where it just hides away in the bottom of the phone uh, and you may you don't even ever have to use it and it will never be in the way uh, and you'll also never lose it as it just seamlessly clicks and fades away into the phone. Now let's talk about the cameras. Now the 14 Pro Max has a triple lens camera system uh, where the 23 Ultra features a four lens camera system including a new 200 megapixel uh, main wide lens. But megapixel count is only a part of the story. So let's see how these camera systems compare in the real world. So in general, uh, I found the 23 Ultra to be more saturated in its colors uh, and also produce a brighter image, particularly seen here if you look at the colors of the sky and water, where I found the 14 Pro Max to be more accurate in colors uh, and also sharper, where you can actually see more details in the balconies. And this just goes to show that megapixel count is not everything. I also found that the 14 Pro Max also has more dynamic range, showing more details here uh, by the car and the pavement when compared to the Ultra. However, the 10X telephoto lens on the S23 does let you get photos that you simply can't get on the iPhone. Check out here how the 10X lens on the Ultra compares to the 3X lens on the Pro Max. Pretty awesome. In terms of skin tones, I found the Pro Max to be more true to life in terms of colors as well as sharpness, where the Ultra does have the tendency to apply some skin smoothing. And this is especially apparent when we compare the 3X telephoto lenses, where as you can see on the S23, uh, my skin may look smoother, uh, but I can tell you that on the Pro Max, it is more accurate. The 14 Pro Max also has a more shallow depth of field with a more natural bokeh, where the S23 can look a bit compressed at times. 
However, the ultra wide lens on the Ultra is better. I guess it's in the name, uh, which does get more light and also more detail when compared to the ultra wide on the Pro Max. And then comparing the selfies, uh, I gotta say both look really good. Uh, and interestingly, the skin tones here are actually better on the Ultra. And I also like that it does get wider, which is especially great for those group selfies. Now let's talk video. Overall, I found the Ultra to be even more stable compared to the Pro Max and also shoots in 8K instead of 4K. But ultimately the iPhone is still better overall, providing better color reproduction and also more smoothly adjusting to changes in exposure as well as white balance. And then finally, looking at some low light photography, the Pro Max here again holds more natural colors while the Ultra manages to add even more light to the photo. So as you can see, uh, the camera systems on both phones are capable of producing some truly stunning results and you can't really go wrong with either. Um, there's also an element of personal preference uh, that comes into play here. Now, personally, as a content creator, ultimately, I find myself choosing the 14 Pro Max more often uh, for its more natural and true to life photos and better video. Though it is also worth noting uh, that when reviewing the photos, my fiance often actually preferred the more saturated look that came out of the 23 Ultra, as you can argue that these photos uh, are more social media ready. So at the end of the day, like I said, uh, personal preference does play a role here. For me, it's the 14 Pro Max, but you really can't go wrong with either. Let's talk about the battery life. Now for me, uh, the battery life is actually one of the key reasons why I use these larger phones. So first on the 14 Pro Max, I can get anywhere from nine to 10 hours of screen on time, meaning it can easily last me all day and evening, still with around 30 to 40% remaining. Now, how does the S23 Ultra compare? Well, the Ultra, thanks to having a more optimized processor, uh, more on performance and longevity in a sec, actually manages to deliver the same great battery life with the same nine to 10 hours of screen on time, meaning that both of these phones in the battery department uh, perform super well and can easily last you all day, possibly even two days with lighter use. Now to add to that, uh, Apple does also add MagSafe and MagSafe is of course great as it allows you to really easily align your phone with the charger uh, and also lets you use things like your MagSafe wallet accessories. Though at the same time, the 23 Ultra of course uses USB-C, uh, which is vastly superior and more standardized than the lightning port in the iPhone. Ultimately, the battery life performance between the two, I would say is similar. Uh, therefore, I give this round a tie. When spending over a grand on a smartphone, uh, I expect top of the line performance and both the Pro Max with its new A16 Bionic chip and the 23 Ultra with its Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip, now for the first time optimized for Galaxy, perform really well. From messaging, uh, social media, watching videos, editing photos, playing games, both phones are super fast and more than keep up. Now, I've already mentioned this in my previous uh, S23 versus iPhone 14 comparison video, but the same is true here. When using the 23 Ultra, I found that compared to last year, there is far fewer uh, random glitches or bugs or lags, and overall found the experience to be much smoother and more stable, which is really great. Uh, but still, on the iPhone, because Apple makes both the hardware and the software, you just get an unmatched level of integration, meaning that the overall experience uh, of using the phone is still going to be smoother on the iPhone, not to mention how incredibly well it integrates into Apple's ecosystem. Both of these phones are big investments and they have to last. Now, Apple is known for providing really long longevity uh, for their products. So I would expect anywhere from five all the way up to seven years of software support and updates for the 14 Pro Max. Now compared to that on the 23 Ultra, Samsung promises up to four years of software updates and five years of security updates. And I love to see this as we finally see the industry catching up to Apple's standards and Samsung here is really leading that charge but still you do get more longevity out of your iPhone uh, 14 Pro Max, meaning the phone will ultimately last longer. Uh, I also found that Apple iPhones tend to hold their resale value better almost than any other phone, meaning that when that time comes to upgrade, you can sell your iPhone for more and buy the next phone at a lower cost. 
Okay, so which of the two phones is best? Well, let's take a look at the scoreboard. Now, first category, uh, in terms of the design, this goes to the 23 Ultra. And I think the same thing can be said for its truly incredible display. Now, when it comes to the uh, battery life, since both phones are able to deliver that incredible uh, nine to 10 hours of battery life, I give this category a tie. And then when we look at the cameras, uh, ultimately both are great, but I do prefer the more natural and true to life look uh, and better video that you get from the 14 Pro Max. And I think the same thing can be said overall uh, when comparing the performance as well as the longevity. So ultimately this leaves us at a tie, but there is still one category left and that is operating system. Comparing the OS's could be a full video on its own, but I think it comes down to the following iOS is ultimately even more stable and smooth to use, where Android allows for more customization and freedom in terms of apps. For me, as a content creator uh, and someone who is already in the Apple ecosystem with my Apple Watch, my AirPods and my Mac, uh, and who uses my phone both for personal as well as work use, reliability and stability is key. And this is why for me, the iPhone 14 Pro Max is ultimately going to be the better choice. But I must say, I was really impressed with the 23 Ultra, and there is no denying that between the two phones, the Ultra is the more innovative of the two. This makes me really excited to see for the future, to see where we stand next year when we compare the best of each brand. Anyway guys, uh, let me know if you have any questions at all about this comparison. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, I highly recommend checking out my S23 versus iPhone 40 comparison, as well as my S23 first 10 things to do video. Thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and be sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. Thanks for watching and take care.